Hello everybody and welcome to episode 29 of the podcast, The Pocket Stylist. Um, I'm Lisa Talbot and today we are going to be chatting about sustainability, resale, reuse and how you can really not only make the most of your clothes but you can make the most of somebody else's clothes if you want to go down that route as well. Now I am joined today by a complete expert in this um, and it is Nicola of Warner by us so hi Nicola how are you hi Lisa I'm fine thank you good good and and you know what I came across you didn't I purely by accident um like we like so many of us do um I think you popped up on my Instagram and I was like oh what is this so I think before we get into the whole from my perspective how do we make the most of your wardrobe how can you help you know move things out of that um please tell everybody about your business and I, and I love the story that we you were talking to me about the other day about how it all started so so tell everybody about the business and how it all started and then we'll delve a little bit deeper into how people can use the process yeah no thank you so so the business um, started quite unexpectedly really um it was a number of years ago um through a health scare I, I'd been diagnosed with breast cancer and it was that really kind of a light bulb moment, wake up call that um, spared me on to wanting to raise some money for charities as a result of the health diagnosis. And I was thinking really about how to do this in a way that maybe could be a little bit unique, a bit innovative, um, but could be a long term thing. Um, and really about, I suppose, using, I, I, I built up a lot of business networks over my career previously. Um, and I thought this is where I can bring all of those contacts and networks to fruition um, for a real common purpose and common goal. But what, what, what is that really? So um, started to kind of speak to people, think about what it is I could do. Always been passionate about, uh, you know, entrepreneurship and business that has social purpose at, at its heart. So. I came up with an idea um, of looking at, well, what do kind of like celebrities and things do with clothes they, they don't wear any longer? And I suppose particularly at that point, we were at the height of, of I suppose, you know, kind of as, you know, Instagram and other social media yeah. platforms exploding onto the scene and, um, and, and people being seen in things that they don't want to be seen in again. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what, what happens to that? So I um, started to kind of use my networks to reach out to a few celebrities and see if they would give me any items from their wardrobes that I could sell for charity. Um, and it was, yeah, it was an interesting process because it wasn't something I was used to doing. Um, so uh, we started off with, um, we had Jacqueline Gold from Ann Summers. Yeah. Who donated a dress to us, a Philip Armstrong gown. I met her at business conference, again, through a mutual contact. Um, just asked her the question and she said, yes, I'll send you something. And it just started from there and, and gained a lot of traction and interest from that point. Don't ask, you don't get, do you? You know, exactly. sometimes, you know, I, I love that whole thing of you, if you don't ask, you don't get. And sometimes people even say to me, I can't believe you asked. But actually, what, what's anyone ever going to say? They're either going to say yes or no, aren't they? Or, or they might fluff a bit in between. But actually, you know, um, if you don't ask, you don't get because then it's, you know, you're able to kind of, you know, like you said, you used your contacts. And, and sometimes in, in business, that, that's what we have to do to, to make things go a little bit further. So, so from the charity um, aspect of it, you managed to do that. And then was it kind of another light bulb that went on that went, oh, actually, you know what, we could do this in a more broader aspect to then kind of, on it sounds silly, help the planet and, and all that type of thing as well. Yes, absolutely. So I think, I think um, I became, you know, immersed a little bit into then that whole world of sustainability and the environment, and just 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 as a result of that, as a knock on effect, almost you became very interested in, well, actually, what does happen to kinds yeah. of fashion items and clothing and things, you know, both in people's wardrobes, but also, um, you know 
from, from a kind of retailer point, point yeah. of view. Yeah, no, definitely. And I think once people learned about what I was doing, and I think the story and journey and the reason why I was doing it was seemed to kind of capture attention. Um, so then just general people would contact me, either had seen, you know, some publicity we'd done or again, um, you were friends of a friend or whoever, and would contact me and say, well, I've got things in my wardrobe that I'd like to, to give. It was maybe items that when we clear out, um, you know, we all have our clear outs, don't we? And we have different piles, different, we have our different categories. Yeah. So it was, you know, often the, the, the charity shop pile, um, you know, a pile that, or maybe I just can't justify because I've spent a lot of money on that. I'll, I'll eBay it myself one day. I'll, I'll lose weight. I'll put on weight. I'll fall in love with it again. I'll do whatever. And I'll put it back in my wardrobe and then I'll take it out again six months later and do the, go through the same process, the same cycle. Um, so it was those kind of items that were people felt maybe attached to a little bit more, but because of, I think my story and my reason for doing it, we're kind of got an impetus of, of what I'd like to support this, I'd like to get involved. So we started kind of reselling those items. And then, you know, I think as I kind of got more involved in the whole kind of sustain, fashion sustainability world, um, started to realize that, well, people have things as well that, you know, they want to give to charity, but some they, you know, they'd like to maybe get a little bit money back for, for different reasons. And there's, that's fine. And I think particularly over the last 18 months with the COVID pandemic and the impact on people's jobs and livelihoods and income and everything else, um, you know, why not recycle your clothes and make some money out of it through, yeah. through selling them? And I think that's where we, that's our, absolutely where we come in because we can offer a range of services and it can be per that personal well we'll take the hassle away from you we'll take the headache away all you need to do is kind of send us those items you know and, and you can do that free of charge yeah but, but you don't have to do anything else so you can earn some money back from it or donate it to charity if you wish yeah, I think it's really interesting what you said, because obviously, you know, in, in the role that I'm in as a stylist, I look at so many ladies' wardrobes, and, and you're absolutely right. There, there are certain areas that people kind of fall into with their wardrobe, you know, and there are ladies who buy, buy items that never, never get the wear, and they still have the labels because they might have been an impulse buy, or they can't find anything that they think that would go with it in their wardrobe. Um, and, and you're absolutely right. The more someone spends on a garment, the more reluctance there is to actually move it through the wardrobe if it's not working for them. Because, you know, ladies and, and gentlemen alike, you know, will say, oh, I paid a lot of money for that dress. Or I, you know, I paid more than I would normally pay for that pair of jeans. But actually the reality is, if you keep it in your wardrobe and you don't use it and you don't wear it and you don't enjoy it, then it creates more of a negative mindset than that positive mindset. So, so you're absolutely right. Now, it's interesting, lots of ladies where you said, you know, we, we sometimes will have a clear out. In some cases, ladies are really good and they have a regimented kind of seasonal kind of look through their wardrobe. What can they keep? What, what don't they like anymore? Other ladies, they don't. They just continue to put more in. And then actually what they do is they lose sight of what they've got. And that's when, you know, I come in and I say, oh, you know, when did you last wear it? Do you love it? And they say, oh, I completely forgot I even had that, you know, and, and there's nothing wrong in that because in reality, when do we normally, ignore the pandemic for a minute, but when do we normally go through our wardrobe? Life is too, too busy, but I think definitely, you know, through the pandemic, people have had time and a lot, you know, everything is to do with time, isn't it? But they've had more time to go, okay, let's go through this wardrobe. You know, what do I love? What don't I like? What could go to charity? What, what actually could I make a bit of money out of? You know, what, what could I do? And I think that's where people are more at now about, they, they know now that actually there's definitely things in their wardrobe that they don't love anymore, it doesn't make them feel good. But also there's so much obviously in the press and the media 
about sustainability and paying something forward, I think now there is the opportunity to do that, whether they donate to a charity, like, like you were saying, or whether they, they can give it to somebody like yourselves who takes away the worry. Because even if you go to a, a client and I say, right, you know, we'll have a pile, charity shop, um, resell and keep, the items that are bagged up potentially for a charity shop could be bagged and left there for days and days. Because actually, when's the time that that person's going to get to go to the charity shop? So I think like your process, which is obviously free and easy, that will really, really help people go, actually, I can do this. And, and I can then also make a difference. And we, I think you and I have said it before, we don't think we'll change the world in a day, but if everybody does their own little bit, it will really, really help. So I, I totally agree with you. And I think having the process that you have is so easy. Tell everybody about your process because I think it's always important for people to understand that businesses like yours have, have created a process that is easy for the consumer. No, absolutely. So I think that was at the forefront of, of, of our mind, really, in terms of that, that journey that people go through and, you know, taking any pain away, really. And we are all a bit lazy, aren't we? In, in <laughs> some cases, we are a bit lazy. Yeah, it's just recognising that everybody's got busy lives. And I, I know myself, you know, you start off a week with a to-do list and then, you know, <laughs> two weeks later, the list is grown and you've not ticked things off because life happens to you yeah. doesn't it? And, and i think um so so our process is, is very simple on our website there's a a step-by-step -step process i have yeah. followed this process for everyone who's listening <laughs> for anyone who's watching the youtube and anyone who's listening i have followed this process and it is the e listen if i can do it anybody can do it sorry i interrupted you carry on tell them more no that's fine that's fine so i think you're on the front page it says sell your clothes or donate your clothes so you just click on that link and the step-by-step -step process is you literally email us at hello at warmbyus.com you tell us roughly you how many items you've got and that just really is for us to know how many bags we need to send out to you that you that you're going to fill up with items so give us your name and address we'll send a number of bags out based on the number of items you've got you've got to sell um you fill those bags up let us know when they're ready um and then we'll email you postage labels uh free postage labels which you just stick on we use a collect plus service so we'll also send you a link that you can find your local collect plus drop off point and that is um, you know, that can be your local petrol station, your local corner shop. There's, there's lots of them around the country. Um, I did the petrol station <laughs> and, and I did it on um, a Friday night when my, my twins are learning to drive. So I did it with them because they said, we haven't been out in the car this week or something like that. And I said, OK, right, you can drive me to the petrol station because I need to drop off this bag. And they were like, really? And I was like, yep. But it is, it's, I mean, it is that easy. It's that simple. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And then we receive the items here. Um, you know, kind of we we saw them, we we photograph them for sale, we list them, we you know, we do some research into looking at what the most appropriate best price would be. Um, and then we 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 load them on. We have a branded eBay shop and a branded depop store at the moment. Um, and that's it. And then we'll keep in touch with you. Um, typically on a you know, three month basis. So we'll let you know at the end of three months what, what items have been sold and we can ar arrange those payments to you. Um, if any items have not been sold at that point, then we have a conversation about, you know, are they seasonal? Is it that maybe we relist them again in a few months time or something? Or you know, did you want to get donated to a, to a directly to a charity? We, yeah. just, we can do because we've got partners. So there's a, there's a, there's a solution, there's an avenue really for, for all of the items. And, and we do that in direct kind of dialogue with yourself. Yeah. And then, and then flipping that, obviously that's the whole selling kind of process, but what's lovely as well is, you know, from um, a paying it forward type of thing, once you've, gone down that road that's fine but if any ladies um were, were thinking 
oh, actually, I wouldn't mind seeing what Worn by Us are actually selling. They can go on, like you said, your specialised Depop shop or the eBay shop, can't they? And see what you've got because they might go, oh, I like that Philip Armstrong dress, for example, or I might like that pair of jeans that someone's selling. So they can also pick up great things that other people have, have sent to you for, for resell as well. So it, it's kind of a, it's a double whammy, isn't it? It is. It's a, yeah, absolutely. It's a two way thing. So, you know, we offer that service that we can kind of resell your items for you, but equally people can grab a bargain. Um, you know, we've got some fantastic things, you know, on our sites, some, some pre-loved, some brand new with tags. We have, we have a lot of jewelry on there. We have a partnership with Beaver Brooks, the jewelers, um, who work with us and have worked with us for a number of years in that they donate items for resale. But that's um, brand new uh, items, Nicola, isn't it? Yes, yes. And and so that, you know, people can buy those items um, a fraction of, you know, a fraction of, of a normal kind of retail cost. And, and again, you know, obviously the at the moment it's really topical isn't it there's a lot of interest in kind of secondhand pre-loved market and sales um and it's just providing that option and like you said earlier it's not none of us are going to kind of solve the whole situation overnight but there's i think there's a momentum building i yeah, think you must become a lot more aware uh, people are thinking well, why do i have to buy that an item brand new um, when you can get something that maybe, like I said, pre-loved, it might have been just worn once, you know, just for a couple of hours or whatever, or or not been worn at all and still be, you know, brand new with tags on from somebody's wardrobe. So, um, you know, that's the other side of the coin in terms of what we're offering. It is, and I think that's so important to kind of reiterate that, you know, from, from the wardrobes that I see, that you find that the items that a lady wants to replace, for example, are ones that they have worn that 20% of their wardrobe 80% of the time. They've really got good wear out of their items. And those actually aren't the items that they want to resell or push on. They want to replace those because they've loved them, they'd love the style and the color and everything like that. The items the majority of clients that then want to push through and you know they want to send to a charity or they want to resell they're the items actually that they've hardly worn because yeah. the reason they've hardly worn them is actually they don't like the fit they don't like the style when it put when they put it on in the morning it's the garment they take off again because they think oh actually i really don't like this and we've all done it haven't we you know me included you know we i bought something quickly really quickly and thought yeah and I know the shape I know the style I, I know it's going to work and I get it home and I go no actually I don't like it because that's gut reaction you know kind of go oh I don't like it so but not necessarily do we then have time to to take it back so yeah. it's interesting for people who think oh my goodness you know I'm just going to get something from a, a, a resale website that someone's worn to death those yeah. aren't the garments they yeah. don't they, they donate because the garments they love, they wear. It's the garments they really kind of, they don't feel good in that they don't wear as much. So, so the quality and the, I suppose, the state of the garment is great because actually they've hardly worn it. No, exactly. And I think also, I think, you know, I think people's habits and priorities have changed. I mean, I think, you know, there, there was a time many years ago where maybe there was a stigma, you know, sometimes around or buying secondhand or whatever i don't think that's the case now and and the amount of the people i speak to um and it, it you know it's people kind of with high profile jobs who've got you know cash to spend and things like that but they still want to you know buy something pre-loved because there's a whole host of other reasons why you would do so um it's not just because you want to kind of, or you haven't got the cash to spend on a brand new item. It's not that, it's not that anymore. That might have been the case a long time ago. Um, you know, it, it's a whole host of reasons that wanting to be more sustainable, recognizing, like you say, that some items are really hardly worn at all. It, it, you know, they, they often don't really fall into a secondhand category. They're just hardly worn at all. They're, they're pristine and, yeah. and fantastic to be able to, 
to get and to buy. Um, but if so you think, if you think about it, you know, you I'm going to pick you up on what, something you said. You said about sometimes there's a bit of a stigma like yeah. there used to be to buying the secondhand clothes. But you go back. Yeah, I agree with you. Totally agree. I don't think there is so much now because it's all yeah. about the sustainability and the recycling. But I was sitting there listening when you said that. But we've all part always, haven't we, passed down our kids' clothes? Yes, yes. Exactly. We've all done it. Or, or a group of mums that we all know, once our child grows out of, I don't, you know, the, the size 10 clothes that they were wearing and your friend's got now a child who's size 8 and they're coming up to a size 10, oh, it's fine, you know, I've got some clothes you can have. And that other mum goes, oh, thank you so much. So, so there's no stigma around swapping clothes with kids and handing okay. them down and and all that type of thing you know when you know baby clothes you know if you if you know you're not going to have another child you bag up the clothes and you say to your friend who's just had a baby oh, i've got loads of boys clothes for you and it but there's isn't it interesting because yeah. with that concerned we we have no problem and and i've never had a problem no we haven't but sometimes yeah. when you you then go Oh, you know, I don't know. I've been to a charity shop and, and I've bought this or I've bought that. People go, oh, have you? Yes. You yes. know, whereas actually, you know, there isn't. And I was just sitting there thinking about that. I thought, oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. You know, my kids' clothes have always <laughs> been been handed down. And, and you know, it's a, it's a running joke in my family. As they've got older, there's certain items of their clothing now that I do send to resellers because... You yes. know, they might have grown out with it. But if it's a branded name, why not? And they still laugh and say, Mum, my goodness, you know, if we didn't, if we stood still long enough, you're going to sell us. But <laughs> you're, it, it's so true, isn't it? It's about changing that mindset again. We do it for our kids. Why, why is it still a little bit of a hesitancy to do it with our adult clothes? Absolutely. But I think that I think times have changed enormously. I mean, since I've been kind of involved in this space over the last, you know, maybe five years or so, I think people's habits and perceptions have changed enormously. And I think, you know, I re recall some conversations at the beginning from some women that I know, um, again, you know, high profile and, and things, but saying, well, actually, I, I do want to buy pre-loved. I probably wouldn't walk into a charity shop. But the fact that I can almost be anonymous online, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I can be anonymous online and I can buy things without anybody maybe seeing me in there. And again, I'm not kind of in, in you know, I'm not kind of endorsing that, that mindset. Um, it, ju it was just a reality of some of mm -hmm. the comments feedback that for different reasons people feel differently so it's not that they don't want to buy pre-love they maybe just don't want to tell everybody that they do for different reasons but the fact that you can buy online um and that you know that nobody knows nobody knows any different but actually what i've seen a shift recently is in people shouting people telling everybody you know um that I, i've bought pre-loved this has reworn and, and everything else. And, and I think it's changed a lot of people's perceptions and habits and, and everything has changed a lot over even yeah. in a short space of time over the last couple of years. Yeah, well, I don't know if you saw it though, even last week, I think it was last week or the week before, Selfridges had a pop-up Oxfam shop in store. And you know what? You kind of, you, you, you do, you look, don't you? And you go, wow, because it, again, now, we need to change the shopping experience yes. for some of the, the, the ladies and gentlemen, you know, some of them want to go into a high street store. But what I just wanted to pick up on that with you was, yeah, you're absolutely right. People's thought pattern and mindset has changed mm. because, you know, you, we're seeing all about climate change and, it, and it's more in the news. It's been, you know, picked up by so many more people. Yes. We just need to all play our part in it and, and you're so right there is you know i know obviously from a charity shop there's one in king's cross it is stunning mm -hmm. you know and they're now they look more like a shop like a, bo a boutique style shop rather than a charity shop and again it's about how do people how does it make you feel when you go inside and you know your service again provides that whole kind of experience we want to make it an experience for people whether they're buying or whether they're selling and i think that that's where it's so important you know definitely 
Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, no, absolutely. I, I completely agree. It is, it is that experience. It's how something makes you feel. Is that that's what you remember? I think, you know, kind of that journey, how it made you feel, what you did, um, what you got out of it. Um, that they're the important things, um, and I think that that matters. You know, that people's there's been a shift in people's priorities, particularly over kind of fashion and retail. And 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 you're right. You know, the charity shops that 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 maybe was you know ten years ago or more is is not necessarily so now. Um, that yeah. you feel more like a shop, and you feel good when you go in, and the quality, you know, and the choice. That's yeah. now available as more and more people join kind of like the you know the resale revolution almost. No, absolutely. You're absolutely right. Um, do you know what? I, I think it's been a, a phenomenal conversation. I'd love chatting about it. I'd love understanding obviously more about your business and hopefully, you know, people will understand more about what comes out of people's wardrobes from my point of view, etc. Before we completely close down the, this podcast and today, just remind everybody, Nicola, how they can find you because, you know, it's such a simple process. I'd love people to be able to just have a look and, and see if it might work for them as well. Absolutely. So our website is warmbios.com. Um, so you can find us online um, and literally you can drop us an email. Hello at warmbios.com. Um, but all that de the detail and the step-by-step -step process is listed on there. We're also on um, Instagram and Facebook and Twitter, and I'm on LinkedIn, uh, Nicola Gleave, so people can find me. So more than happy for people to contact me through any of those avenues at all. Um, but yeah, you know, okay. just kind of looking to play our part uh, in all of this and, and help to provide a, a good service for people. No, exactly. It's been a complete pleasure talking to you. you. I hope Thank everybody you. has enjoyed the whole conversation about resale, sustainability, and also how maybe you can look at if you're interested in buying pre-loved or you want to go through the process of selling as well. So I'm absolutely thrilled to be part of it. Um, and we will see everybody and hope you enjoyed listening to this one and we'll be back next week. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks, Thank Nicola. Bye. Thanks, Lisa.